Okay, so up to the two dots over here. <coughs> this has some Aleph. Tanan Hasam. We learned over there in the Mishnah. Koyhein Shaloka Bet Spoy. A Koyhein that got a wound on his finger. Koyuchalea Gemi. He can wrap around it a Gemi. A Gemi is a plant which uh, is used like a, like a grass or something which you wrapped around your finger. And Rashi learns that, and most is related that it heals. Besides that, it covers the, uh, the wound, that it shouldn't get everything dirty from the blood. It actually heals the wound. It has some, uh, you know, medicine in it that causes the healing. So it says like this. So you karachal a gemi v'mikdash. In the mikdash, you can wrap around a, uh, a gemi on this wound. Avaloi b'medina, but not outside the base of mikdash. Because, again, we're talking about on Shabbos, and on Shabbos, you're not allowed to put on medicine on the, on, on, on the wound. It's a gzeir of shrika samimonim. You're not allowed to uh, take medicine uh, on, on Shabbos, uh, unless this guy's a real chayla. So therefore, um, in the, uh, outside the base of Mikdash, you cannot put on this gemi. But in the base of Mikdash, we say, in shvus the Mikdash, there's no isadra in the Mikdash, so therefore he could put it on. Now, vim lahaisi menudam, but if you're putting it on tight to squeeze out blood, Kan v'kan aser, signing the base of mikdash or outside the base of mikdash is aser because that you're not allowed to do on Shabbos. Okay, so that's the mission. So now the Gemara says as follows: Amr Rav Yehuda Berei the Rav Chia Loi Shanu. We only learned El Gemi, only a Gemi. You could wrap around the Gemi. Avot Tzilzul Cotton. Tzilzul Cotton is like a little bandage. Have a Yitur Begadim. So then we were talking about in the previous daf for Kain Gadol's. A kain, I'm sorry, a kain wears four begotten, and he's now have any extra begotten. So if he wears a bandage, that would be considered he has an extra clothing on him, oh. and that would mess up his, I mean, that would be a problem with his avoid. So I mean, it's a begotten. Rabbi Yechon says, no, lo yamu yitu begotten, el b'makam begotten. You only say there's a problem of having extra clothing in the place where you wear clothing. Ava shloi b'makam begotten, loi have a yisr. If it's not in the place where you wear clothing on your finger, there's not a problem of having an extra clothing. Now, uh, the way Rashi learns, there's no real issue of extra clothing on the place of clothing, but the issue is more of a chatzitza. If you have another clothing, a bandage, under your shirt, so that would constitute of a chatzitza. That's really what the Gemara means. Perhaps the Rambam learns that a seed to be gone, this is a question, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, an extra clothing underneath the shirt or the pants or whatever it is, that would be a problem because that would be a, a, a chatzitza. But if it's not in a place where Begit is, Rabbi Yechonah says there is no problem of putting on a bandage. Where's the chatzitza between him and the cliches? And the clothing. Back to the Mara. The Mara asked, for tape clay, okay, so he's not, doesn't have it on the place of the clothing, the bandage, but he has it on his hand. For tape clay, Mishum chatzitza. Then there's going to be a chatzitza between his hand and a klisharis that he would hold to do kabbalah or whatever Avoid is doing. There's going to be a separation between his hand and the keli, and that itself is a problem, we learn out later, it has to be ba'atz ma'ishal kayin, he has to hold it with his hand itself, he can't have a separation. So typically that this bandage will be a chatzitza, so the Gemara answer is a bit small, it's talking about he got this cut on his left hand, and we know the kayin does the avayda with his right. right hand, so it's not a problem. Inami, shalai b'makam avayda, it's on a place of his hand where he's not doing the avayda with, maybe the back of his hand, the place where he's not doing the avayda, and that is not an issue. Okay, so that's Rabbi Yechon. So we have uh, two sheetas here. Okay, we have the sheeta of of, um, of Rabbi Huda Braid Rav Chia that says that a bandage is a problem even not where the clothing are, and Rabbi Yechon says it's only a problem where the clothing are. The Gemara says, "Upliga the Rava," and this argues on Rava. The Amar Rav Amar Rav Chizda b'Mokim b'Gadam. If it's in a place where the clothing is, Afilu Nima Achas Chaitzitz Chaitzitz. Even one string. Is a problem if it's in a uh, chatzitza. It could be as small as one string. It doesn't have to be a whole bandage. Shaloi b'makim, shaloi If it's not in the place where the clothing, it's not under the shirt or something like that. So then, shalosh al shalosh chaytzetzes, pachz mekanan chaytzetzes. If it's on the hand or a different part of the body which is not clothed, so there, if it's three at spice by three at spice, that's large enough to be considered a begad. That that would be, we could say, Chatzetzis here, but actually says again, this means that you're wearing an extra clothing then. Yeah, but Shula Shal shows the only is the Hashivas. For Aniyam, for four people, yeah. Yeah, for three, at spice, by three at spice, it's only for Aniyam. But that's enough 
to be considered that he's exactly. wearing something yeah, yeah. Uh, extra here. Yeah, yeah. So in, in the place that the uh, that the Gadim are actually worn, is the problem more the chatzitza or the baltosef aspect? The chatzitza. So if it's in a place of the, uh, of the clothing, so then even one string is 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 would be a chatzitza. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, Rashi learns that's uh, that's what it means. So it'll be a chatzitza. Shalayim makam gan, where it's not where the clothing are. So then you have three by three. It's chatzitzas pachos mikan ena chatzitzas. So the Gemara says that's what Rav says in the name of Chizik. Gemara says Adi Rav Yochanan, this on Rav Yochanan vadi pligi for sure. Rav on Rav Chizik is arguing on Rav Yochanan who said there's no problem. Not b'mokim the begadim. There's no problem at all. There's only a problem by the begadim. Mm -hmm. But Ad Rav Yehuda Brei Rav Chia milaim and the pligi. Does he argue on Rav Yehuda Brei Rav Chia? Because Rav Yehuda Brei Rav Chia said even where it's not the mokim begadim, only a gemi you're allowed to wear, which is just a piece of grass. But a a tzitzel cotton, a small bandage, you're not allowed to wear. But that's smaller. Tzitzel is not really a billion bandage. I have to make a correction. Tzitzel is like a little band that they wore. It's a little band they put on. So it had like a of a begot. So it's also caught in the little band that he put on his finger. He says, is a problem, even though it's not three tfachim by three at spice by three at spice. It's smaller. And Rav is saying it has to be three at spice by three at spice. Mm -hmm. So does he argue on Rav Yehuda Bredu Rav Chia? The Gemara says, maybe not. Shani tzotzel cotton the chashiv. It could be a tzotzel cotton, a small, uh, a small band. It's chashiv. It has the chashivas of a begot, even though it's small. And therefore, even Ravel would agree that that would be a problem to wear, even Shalai B'makam B'gadim, because that's considered a beggar by itself. But normally, if it's just a bandage or something, so then you would need three at spice by three at spice. That's the first Lashon of the Gemara. Lishna Lishnachwina brings this whole discussion a little bit differently. Amri La Amri Rav Yehuda Bred Rav Chia, Rav Yehuda Bred Rav Chia said as follows, Loi Shonu El Loishon well a gemi a gemi that you could put on. Avot tzitzel cotton chaitzis. Tzitzel cotton is chaitzis is a chatzita, which Rashi says means also that it's an extra begadim. Yeah, said, is it the question of being a, a, a gemi or a tzitzel? Yeah, so a gemi is okay, but a tzitzel is it's just a piece of grass. It's a vegetation, or right? Or yeah, so that's less. A tzitzel is a band, you know, yeah, you're buying the store. Yeah, this is why you're saying the Yeah, the game is a... Uh, it's is, okay, is, is but vegetation. the tzitzel is a problem, right? right. It's not, it also is considered not, not a chatzitz in general. By, by uh, when uh, when it comes to uh, dam, the, the, the game is is, a, is not a chatzitz. By dam, in, by, even by, by, no, by wine. We don't consider the 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 gemi. Yeah. Uh, let's say we need a, a spout. So for Shabbos, uh -huh. Lenyan Shabbos, it's not off. considered. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So the says like this. So Rabbi Behuda Rabbi Yochia says Loishon or gemi, but still some cotton chaytzitz is a problem. Okay, this is similar to what he said before. Rabbi Yochanan Amar Lo Yomru Chatzitza BePachas Mishal Shal Shalish. We don't say there's a Chatzitza less than three by three. Ela BeMakom BeGadim, Ava Shalay BeMakom BeGadim. Shal 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 Chatzitzas Pachas Mikanei NeChatzitzas. So here Rabbi Yochanan is saying that yes, if it's three by three, it's a problem, even not where the clothing are. But uh, less than three by three is a problem where the clothing are. So Rabbi Yochanan is a little different than Rabbi Yochanan before. For Hainu, and this is similar to Rava Amar Rav Chizda. That's the same as Rav Am Rav Chizda that said the same thing, that if it's not where the clothing are, you have a problem if it's three at spice by three at spice. If it's where the clothing are, even less, is a problem. So the Gemara says, Maybe they're arguing on Rav Huda Rav Chia that says a tzotzel cotton is a problem, not b'mokim begadim, even though it's less than three by three. The Gemara says the same thing. Shani tzotzel cotton the chashiv. Tzotzel cotton is chashiv, and therefore, that would be a problem so the Gemara says, Rav Yochanan, Rav Yochanan, that says that you need three by three. Uh, uh, Rav Yochanan that says that uh, three by three. Shalay b'makom begadim. Rav Yochanan, my ear you get me. Lashmin et tzol tzakar. Rav Yochanan holds you need three by three, and he says a band is not good enough. It's not a problem. Let him say. Why does he say gemi is not a problem? But uh, uh, but three by three is a problem. Let him say tzitzel cotton is a problem. Even a small band is a problem. 
So Milsa Agavurcha Kamash on the Gemi Masi that Gemi heals, and that's why this person put on the Gemi. So according to the second Loshan, there's just a machlaikis whether a tzilzal cotton has a chashivas of a beged, and that's a problem shaloi b'makam begadim. But b'makam begadim, everybody agrees a small amount of chaytzitz under the clothing, and not under the clothing, everybody agrees that three by three is a problem, and there's a machlaikis whether a tzilzal cotton, which is a little band, does that have a chashivas of a beged, and that's a problem. That's all according to the second wash. Where is this being placed? Is it, a, is it like a belt around the waist? We're just talking about the finger. It's a little bend, so you know they they wore it on the finger or on the hand. Because the, 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 the translation here is belt and. Yeah, I don't confusing. know. It's a bend. I would yeah. Yeah. Ligature. It's a bend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They use a medical term. Yeah. No, it's just talking about belt. Boy, yeah. rubber. Rava is the shaila. Okay. <coughs> now we're getting into the question of chatzitza of a separation by the big day kahuna. So Rabbi Isk, Nichnasul a ruach be big day. If a wind comes in, blows in to the in a windy day, and it blows in and it separates between the clothing and the per, and the person, you know, it becomes an air pocket there. Mahu, what's the halacha? Al besari bein, and it says that the clothing has to be al besari on his skin. That means literally it has to be on his skin, bein on his on his on his flesh. Well, and it's not because the wind is now separating the clothing from his flesh. That's how people wear clothing. It doesn't have to be extremely tight fit. So that's the Shiloh and the Gemara. The Gemara declares another Shiloh. Kina a lice or uh, you know, these bugs. Now, today we're not used to Baruch Hashem having bugs on our goof, but in the, in the old days it was very common. To have to have a little kino, uh, kino in, 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 in the, in the uh, crawling around. They didn't take showers that often, and um, and it was natural. So the question is, since it's natural, is that a chatzitza? So the Gemara says like, Mesa loy tibarlach. If you killed it, if it's dead, loy tibarlach the vadi chatzitza. That's for sure a chatzitza. A dead bug is for sure a chatzitza. Chay if it's alive, my what's the halacha? Mi amina? Do we say kivan the asa va'azla? It comes. It comes and it grows there, and it goes. Mm-hmm. So Rabbi Sehi, it's, it's it's natural. Avoy chaitzen, it's not considered chatzitza. Are you doing? Keeping the cup of the you mock put on it. If you catch it, you're going to get rid of it. So chaitzer, therefore, it is a chatzitza. The Gemara doesn't answer the shaila. The Gemara is just asking all the shailas. Offer maushi yachatz. What about dirt? Is that chatzitza? Offer vali chaitz. Offer dirt is for sure chatzitza. Avak offer. It's just a little. Dusting at the end. It's very thin and you don't really feel it with your hand. Ma was the halacha? Is that a chatzitza? So, beis hashechi, okay, under the armpits where it's hard to get a tighter fit, ma is that a chatzitza if it's loose? So it means, you know, the, the, the arms, like this on a jacket, depends how high you sew up the arms. Sometimes it's sewed a little lower, sometimes it's sewn higher. So if it's a little lower, so you have an airspace between the, 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 the bottom of the jacket or the, or the, the shirt and then the thing. So perhaps that could be a chatzitza, because there's a separation. It's not on his goof. Al basari bidin v'aleko. Eidilma derech lovisha v'kach. That's the normal way of wearing it, so it's not a chatzitza. Hichnas yari l'sachaykah. If he sticks his hand underneath the shirt. Ma'u. Guf oi michayitz. Says his body chayitz. Oi lo, you're not. Nima Mausha Tachatz, a hair, uh, no, sorry, a, a string, a string, a thread. Mausha Tachatz, does it, is that considered a chatzitza? So you must say, what's a shaila? Nima Vali Chatzitza, for sure a thread is a chatzitza. Ela Nima Meduldelis, it's hanging off the, it's separated from the shirt, but it's coming from there, so it's a little bit attached. It's attached to it, but it's it's cut. So, Mao, what's the halacha? Is that considered part of the shirt and it's not chatzitz, or therefore it is chatzitz? Interesting to note. Um, uh, wow, okay, so let's pause here a second. It's interesting to note that this the Shaila here by Big Day Kuna is, even though in other halachas of chatzitza, all these things will not be considered a chatzitza because you're not normally makbar on it, it's not enough to be a chatzitza, but for Big Day Kuna, there's a halacha that has to be on you, so directly on you, so even uh, even if other halachas not a chatzitza, it could be this doesn't work for that. And, and the Pais can have a Shaila and Hilchas Tefillin is the same halacha. Mm-hmm. Tefillin, there has to be al Rosh Hashanah. But the Kohen Gudl, when he wears eight begodim, isn't yeah. there sometimes 
Well, that's the way it's supposed to be worn. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be worn. In effect, there is yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, the Torah says wear this yeah. on top of that. But yeah, right, yeah. The other one's not, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just pointing out, by, by tefillin, which has to be on you, the place can have the same shayla, if, if, does it work with the regular chatzitzes? Or perhaps it's even worse. And maybe you have to really scrub yourself clean, because even avakdak is, is going to be chaitzis, the place can deal with any loose hair, maybe is chaitzis. There are things which normally wouldn't be considered chatzitzes, which perhaps is a halacha of al besari al gufay that it should be chaitzis. There's a special halacha over here by Big Day Kahuna, maybe it applies to tefillin. Okay, so the Mar says like this Boy Rav Mar Bar Ravashi. Yotza Saira Bibigdar. His hair hung down and went into his clothing. Mao. Is that a problem? Okay, now you know Kain has to have a haircut every thirty days, but nonetheless, if somehow there's a hair that's a little longer than and went into under the clothing, the question is, is that a chatzitza? Sare kagufa, do we say that's like his body? Dummy, and therefore it's not a chatzitza? Or lie, or perhaps Lavka gufa is. I mean, it's not like his body; it's like a foreign object, and it will be a chatzitza. Boyi Reb Zayra, Reb Zayra has a shayla. Tefillin Marshi Yechaitzu. Could the koyin wear tefillin? Is tefillin a chatzitza? You know, we, he's wearing a shirt, so now the tefillin is going to go under the shirt. Is that a chatzitza? <coughs> so what's the shayla? Aliba demanda Amma Laila Lav Zman Tefillin. If you hold that night is not Zman Tefillin, that you don't wear tefillin at night. <coughs> There's no shayla. Why? Even the laila chaytzi, yoy nami chaytzi. Rambam says a svara that since at night, what the kohen wears has to wear his begadim at night. Also, he's doing certain avodas at night, so then he can't wear tefillin. He has to take it off. And if he would be continuing wearing the tefillin at night, it would be a chatzitza. So therefore, even in the day, the tefillin between his clothing and the guf will be a chatzitza. What does he do at night? Well, just uh, you could bring a varim on the mizbeach. Yeah, yeah. You could bring it in the bottom line, you could do some of that. Yeah. Yeah, the pieces that weren't burnt yet. So the Gemara says, so then, since it's a chatzit at night, it would be a chatzit in the day also. Laman da amal laila zman tefillin, if you hold that, you could wear tefillin at night. So maybe, you always wear the big lakuna with the tefillin. So my mitzvah the gufa chayitzi, is a mitzvah of a guf is chayit. So you chayit, it's not chayit. a mitzvah that he has to wear on his guf. Is that chayit or not? So the Gemara says the Galgal Milso uh, uh, rolled this question uh, went around went around the uh, base matter. Shemot lo kamei de Ravami it came to Ravami. Amalei he said to them Talmud Aruch will be a day we have a clear Gemara we have a Kabbalah that Tefillin chaytzitz says Tefillin is a chaytzitzah and therefore the Kaihanim could not wear the Tefillin. Meisve is a kasha. They have a brace that says Kaihanim ba avoid dosam Kaihanim when they're doing the avoid the Leviim the Duchanim Leviim when they're Duchanim. The Yisrael of the Mamadam, and the Yisrael when they're standing by the by the avoid, they would come. They would have a group of Yisrael that would come by the Tamid and stand by the Azara. They come to Yerushalayim and stand in the Azara. Peturim and Atfilin are potter from davening. and Atfilin from wearing tefillin. So it just sounds like they're potter because they're Isaac for mitzvah. So they're potter from the mitzvah of wearing tefillin. My love and Menichon ain't in chaytzetzes. It sounds like that if they're if they wear it, it's not chaytzitz. It's just a question if they're potter or not, but it sounds like they could wear it. I said, no, lo, yim, anichem chaytzitz. If they can't wear it, it's chaytzitz. Yachi peturim, why does it say they're potter? Asurim, it should say they're not allowed to wear the tefillin. It's asur, because it's going to make a chaytzitzah. The Gemara says, keep an equal levim v'yisrael, levim, when they're standing on the platform, singing, whatever they're doing, and the Yisraelim, when they're standing there by the avoid, the day, they're not wearing big day kuna. So there's Levim Yisrael, the Loi Master, the so you can't say it's also for them to wear tefillin, they just don't have to. Shemachi Tana Peturim, so we said Patu even for the Kayhanim, but really the Kayhan is not allowed to wear tefillin. For acting in Mara Vatani, we learned in the Brysa Menichon, Eina Chaytzetzis, if they wear tefillin, it's not Chaytzitz. So how could you say it is a Chaytzitzah? We have a clear Brysa. Mara says, Loi Kasha, Hadi Yad, Hadi Rosh. The tefillin shall Yad is Chaytzitz, that goes under the shirt, that's Chaytzitz. The tefillin shal roish is not chaytzitz. Mar says ma'ishin of the yad. What's the difference? Tefillin shal yad except yilba shal besari. He has to wear the kasayinus on his basar, and the tefillin will get in between. Shalay yadav chaytzitz bein el besari. The roish nami on his head also. Except for sometimes it's nefes al roish. He had to wear a hat on the head, and it says al roish. So it can't be anything between the hat and the head. So the Mar says tana. 
Sarah by a coin godel, it says, the Bryce says his hair was visible when he sits on the snafis. He wore it sits on his forehead and wear a hat, and in between there was a space where his ear was noticeable. Shasham, and over there, Menichem films where he wore the tefillin. So there was actually a space on his head between the tzitz and the hat where he was able to put on tefillin. Then nothing can go above the tzitz. What? Then nothing can go above the tzitz. Why not? That was the hat. The hat. The hat. <coughs> he had a hat, and he had, uh, 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 he had the tefillin in between. Yeah. Now, so he wore his, that's correct. He, uh, Koy, the Koyan would wear his Tfilin Shal Rosh without wearing the Tfilin Shal Yad. That's correct. That's what comes out. Mm-hmm. Couldn't wear the Tfilin Shal Yad while he was doing the Avayda. After the Avayda, he'd put it on. But while he was doing the Avayda, he couldn't wear the Tfilin Shal Yad. But the Tfilin Shal Rosh, he was wearing. Now, even though the straps of the Tfilin had to get between, uh, perhaps, maybe maybe not the hat, but the, the sits went all the way around. So the psil, the, 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 you know, the blue psil that they tied the tzitz on with, that went over the straps of the tefillin, so that's okay. But the ikut tzitz didn't have a chatzitz. There was nothing between the tzitz and, the, and his basa, and there was nothing between the hat and the basa, so that was okay. It was called guttle. Yeah, the kohen guttle, yeah. But the regular kohen, did he wear it? He also wore tefillin because he could wear the hat higher up. Yeah, so the, so the, the hat was a little bit up. Yeah, back, the hat was a little bit up. But the uh, but on Tzvul and Shalyad he couldn't wear. But the regular coin only four got him. It's so easy. Yeah, yeah. He only four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There is a question: Is this called Yitur Begadim? It's three by three. Maybe he's wearing an extra bag. Mm-hmm. So it would seem that Tzvul is not considered a bag. It's a yeah, the, question they, they discuss. They need small Tzvul. Yeah, they wear small Tzvul. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's a very good point. That puts a yeah. back like a bacher, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Zok the Gemara. Shaloi Richard Sidaim Raglaim. The next case, if the guy didn't wash his hands and feet before he worked, so that void is possible. Okay, that was part of the Bryce we had, the Mishnah we had. So that we learn out. Asya Chuka Chuk and Mechus of God. We had this in the Bryce before. That also you learn out, says Chak Oyom, you learn out from. That if he's that 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 avoid his puzzle if he didn't wash his hands. Tana Rabbanon, Kohen Gadol Shloi Taval Shloi Kiddush Bein Beged LeBeged. So we know the Kohen Gadol and Yom Kippur. Besides the initial Tvila, everyone had to go to the mikveh before yeah. they went to the mikdash the and yeah. wash their hands and feet with the kiyur. But besides that initial one, he had between each time he switched from his big day loven to big day zavin back to big day loven, he had a the tavil and wash his hands. So if he if he uh, if he didn't do that, if he wasn't Tavala and wasn't Kiddush between the Begadim, or Bain Avaidal Avaid between the different Avaidas for Avan and did the Avaidal without it, Avaidasa Kshay with Kashan. As long as he did the initial one up front. If he missed the, if he didn't do the ones in between, but the Avid the Avaid is Kashan. For Echad Kain Gadal, the Echad Kain Hedjit, Shaloi Kiddush Yad of Iragal of Shachlis. If they didn't wash their hands and feet shachos in the morning, the other and do the avoda, avodasek psul or avoda is possible. So Amalai, Rav Asi le Rav Yochan, Rav Asi es Rav Yochan, Mechdi Chamish Tvilois Vasari Kedushim Doraisa. It's Doraisa. This that you have to table five times and ten times you have to wash your hands and feet because each time they took off the clothing, they washed and they put it back on, they washed again. So there was five Tvilois and ten Kedush Yadayim Raglayim. So. Uh, it says it's Daraisa. It says it in the Pasuk clearly. And it says Chuka, which means it should be Ma'akib. Liyakva, which should be Ma'akib, all of them. Why are we saying that if the Kayin missed the in between washings, that it's okay? <coughs> that the avoid is kosher. So the Gemara says, Amalei, Amakra, the love Sham. We should wear the clothing. So we learn out from there, Levisha Ma'akib. We make a dig. Only the wearing the clothing is Ma'akib that's required, and if he doesn't do that, it, it messes up the avoda. The ain davar achar ma'akiv. The other things aren't aren't uh, aren't going to be ma'akiv. It's not going to mess him up. And therefore, if he didn't wash, he's okay. So uh, he his uh, Rashi's face lit up. He was so happy with the answer. So Amalei, so uh, so Rabbi Yochanan put a damper on him. He says, hey, "Don't get so excited." Vava ufsa kasvi I wrote you a vav on on nothing. In other words, he wrote it on. Rashi says on 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 a, on a crack that uh, that uh, if you write a, a letter on cracks, it gets cut up. You don't see the letter. 
So in other words, I, I, I gave you a, a fake answer. It's an expression. Vava Ufsa, I wrote a Vav on, on crack. In other words, I gave you an answer which doesn't stand on anything. Why? Because, if this would be the case, it's Safranami. If we're going to make this drasha of Esham, that only wearing the clothing is makav and nothing else, so even the first Kiddush of the in the morning should also <coughs> not be ma'akiv, that if you didn't do it, the avoider should be kosher. So, so, we, so, so, so this answer is not sufficient. So, Amr Chizki, Amr we have a different pasik. We have a pasik that this should be a chayk for him, the Kayin Gadol, and his children for the generations. So we learn out like this. For Aaron, who was the Kayin Gadol, and his children. Dover ma'akev b'zaroi, something which is ma'akev by his children, ma'akev by, is ma'akev by him. Dover she'en ma'akev b'zaroi, e'en ma'akev by. In other words, something which, even by not the Kayin Gadol, by the regular Kayin, is required, and if he doesn't do it, it messes up the Avodah, that's going to be problem by the Kayin Gadol, but something with by the children don't have this issue, that's not going to be ma'akiv by the Kayin Gadol. Therefore, the other three lists in between the Begad the Begad, a regular Kayin doesn't have that. Therefore, that's not ma'akiv. Uh, avoid will be kosher. But the first uh, the first washing where even a regular Kayin has, so that's required even by a Kayin Gadol, and that will be ma'akiv that the avoid will be possible. So that's the drasha, how we know only the first one and not the other ones uh, when, you swear, when the Kohen Gadol switches his begotten. Rav Yonis and Omar are a different pasuk. Mehocha, v'rochtsu mimenu Moshe v'aron u'bonav. It says, Moshe, Aaron, and his children will wash from the kiyar, where they wash their hands and feet. So again, the same type of drasha. Dover ma'akev b'bonav. It says his children here also. So we have akish. Whatever's ma'akev, whatever's uh, a sta- uh, is a problem by his children's ma'akev b'ay will be ma'akev by him also. Dover she'en ma'akev b'bonav. Something with his children that won't be an issue if his children don't wash, in the Ma'akav Bai, it's not going to be Ma'akav by the Kayin Gadol, and if he misses it, it won't mess up the Avoida. So, so the same drasha. Okay. Washings, though, are there mitzvah sasei? Are they considered, like, in terms of Tariq mitzvahs, those are mitzvah sasei? It's not a separate one, but it's all included in the, in the, in the, the mitzvah of Kiyar or the mitzvah of the Avoida, yeah. So, Rabbi Yoynes in my time, why did Rabbi Yoynes bring, the, not say Chizki as Pasik of Ahoyslam Chok Oilam Loyal Zari? Why did he bring the second Pasik of Ahoyslam Manu? Amalach Ahula Doyus Udiksev. That's talking about for generations. That doesn't mean, uh, that's telling me that there's a mitzvah of Kir, not just for, for, for Aaron, but also for future generations. It's not coming to make a drasha that only what his children do is Makiv and not him. It's just telling me that there is a mitzvah of washing for the generations. The Edoch, my time alone, may, may hide. Uh, 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 why didn't Chizkia say, like Yonis's drasha of Rochsam and Moshe Baran Banav? Me boy, Lahini's dad, Pasik, Rab Yosi Bachanina, Dom of Yes Bachanina, Kokio, Shain by Kulikade, Kadela Kadash Arba Kahanim, we men who the Kior that you washed from. That 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 uh, kli that they washed from had to be large enough to hold water to wash four kaihanim, and if it's not large enough to wash four kaihanim, ain makachim or you cannot use it. How do you know that? Shenema this pasuk rochtzman of Moshe and Aaron and Bonav, Moshe and Aaron is two, and Bonav he had two children that were left alive that washed, so that's four people. So this pasuk is used not to tell me something that's makav in the children's makav on him, but rather this pasuk is used to tell me. That you need a large enough kiyar to hold the water to wash four kaihanim. Okay, Tana Rabbanim. Ketzad mitzvah's kiddush. How did they do the mitzvah of kiddush? How did they wash their hands and feet? Which was not a simple feat, as we'll see. Maniach yodei ha'imonis al gabi ragle ha'imonis. You would put your right hand over your right foot. Yodei ha'smoilis al gabi ragle ha'smoilis. And you put your right left hand on your left foot. Makadish, and then you would wash it respectively. You so, wash it? What? You yourself wash it? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, how would he do that? He could switch hands. Yeah. You get to the beam. Yeah. 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 A faucet on the key? The faucet was just to fill up the cup, but they would have to actually pour oh, it to yeah, wash it. it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 But he says both hands and both feet were done simultaneously. No, no, no. That was the next one. Okay. You okay. jump ahead. Okay. Okay. So, so the first one, you did your right hand on your right foot and your left foot hand on your left foot. The Makadish, and you did the Kiddush. Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda, Maniach, 
שתי יד אבל גבי זה, זו אגבי זו, both hands one on top of the other, ועל גבי שתי רגל זו אגבי זו, they put one foot on top of the other foot, so we're standing like this, one foot on top of the other, one hand on top of the other, and then they would pour it on all four, all together. Okay? So, uh, no, there was top, there was big one, like some wall, and was tops, not was, not washed. No, no, that's how you filled it up. For legs. Yeah. For legs, they put no, legs no, no, inside. No, they had a port, but they did it on top, on all four together. So the Gemara says like this, Amr Lai Haflagasa. Yeah, so they said, they, they said to, to Rabbi Yossi by Yehuda, Haflagasi, I'm doing something which is, yeah, Shalasis came. You know, it, this is wild. It's not possible to stand like that. Shafir come away, they're saying, good, it's very hard to stand on one foot with one foot on top of that and, 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 the, and the hands on top of that. So he says, uh, the friends would help him that he shouldn't fall. Okay? His friends, his friends, the other Kayhanim would sort of support him that he wouldn't fall down. He basically, he had to try to stand on his own, but they would help him that he won't go flying. Well, they weren't holding his hands and feet. They were just holding his back. Co- and okay. Each coin yeah, yeah. or just the Kohen Gadol's doing it? Each coin, every coin. Every coin. Yeah, yeah. Every coin. Uh, it's an acrobat. Yeah. Uh, uh, it had it being, uh, uh, you know... Yeah, uh, good shape. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, good shape. Yeah. You've this for, uh, what, twice a year. Right? Oh. So the Gemara says like this, My Benai, what's the Machleikas, the Tanakama, and Rabbi Yosef by Yehuda? Am Rabbi, Amida Minatsari, Kabenayu. If you're, you're, you're standing up on the side, you're being a little bit supported, as a machoik, as if that's called standing. Because since they had a stand when they washed themselves from the kir, the question is, is this considered that they were standing? Tysus brings the whole shaila here. When you're leaning, you shouldn't lean. About Kaira, I meant you shouldn't lean when he's leaning, because perhaps that's not called standing. Okay? Based on this. Because if you hold, you need to be standing. Oh. What's the problem? Why don't they just sit? Forget the whole standing bit. Let them just sit and wash. It says when they wash, to serve. The shame is moment. Every time they did that avoided, they had to do standing. And since it says when they wash their hands, so he's learned from there that they have to be standing when they wash their hands. So don't yeah. we know they can't sit? The only Dovid and Malak was the only person who could sit. What they sit? In, in Dazo, yeah. yeah. How do you wash? Turn that floss it up. No, no, but the second one. How do you wash? Do an avoid actually. Yeah, when you put your foot on top of another foot, how does the bottom foot get washed? Because the top foot is a mechitza bit. Well, it's not touching. It's a little bit higher. Uh, oh, it's, goes. oh, it's not resting on it. It's you. not resting You're on it. You're not holding it. No, no. There's a little space in between. And the water drips on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. The water it's gets in. And you jump. Yeah. In Hilchas Nefshil Sedai, by the way, in all the Mishnai system of war, you can wash both hands, or many people can wash their hands with one pouring. You pour and the water gets. Exactly how it happens, I'm not 100% sure, but the water goes all around. Well, all the on Pesach, like, your kids come and they wash your hands by the... Uh, no, we're saying both right at so once. Oh, I think so. But here they don't, they don't use a becher. Don't try yeah, it's just a spout of water coming down the basin. Yeah. 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 No, the basin mikdash. Yeah. 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 That's the key. Oh, the key is the key. The key is the key. The key is the key. They turn it on. Yeah, okay. Tone of Rabbanon. The key is the key is the key. Okay, if you makadish your hands and feet in the day, ain't so makadish balayla. When it comes nightfall, you don't have to rewash your hands and feet. But balayla, if you came to work and you were at night, so makadish bayayim. When it comes the morning, and alois, you're gonna have to rewash your hands and feet. Dibe Rebbe, that's what Rebbe holds. Show how your Rebbe. I'm a lina moyelas bekidish yadaim beraglayim lina. Now we're introducing the concept of lina. I don't know if we had it yet in Zvachim. Lina. Apostles, things that are left overnight that causes a psal, and you have to restart again. So the water being left over into the morning, that apostles, and you have to redo the whole uh, washing. Yeah, but this, this, yeah, so this leader, as we'll see later, the kiyah itself, they had to lower into the well over at night, so in the morning they would retake it up. It couldn't be left over from the night till the morning. So even if you're already washed and your hair's already dry, but you have to, it's sort of lina mayelas. The, the, the overnight sort of ruins it, and you have to re-wash your hands after Alois in the morning. That's what Rebbe holds. 
Lina Mayels Bekidish Daim Raglaim, Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Shimon Aimer, no. Ain Lina Mayels Bekidish Daim Raglaim, there's no problem that it stayed overnight, and you just keep on going. If you washed your hands the night before, you could keep on going into the morning. Tani Edoch, we have another similar brysa. It says like this, You are makriv on the Mizbeach, kol halayla, the whole night, in the morning, when it gets light, Tani Kiddush Daim Raglaim, you have to rewash your hands and feet. Divei Rebbe, that's what Rebbe holds. Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Shimon Aimer, Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Shimon says, since you washed already your hands and your feet before you started doing the Avoida, you go 10 days straight working as long as you don't stop, you don't have to re-wash your hands and feet. So we have two prices with the similar machloikas. But we need to have both prices. Even though they're arguing about the same thing. Why? If we would have the first price, he come a Rebbe, this is where Rebbe said, perhaps, that you have to rewash your hands and feet. The Pasuk lay, may avoid, avoid. In other words, he did avoid that night, and then he took a break. And then in the morning, he never walked out. But then in the morning, he's going to start doing the avoid again. Maybe then Rebbe holds you have to rewash your hands and feet. But if you're going straight, and you haven't stopped working, perhaps Rebbe agrees you don't have to wash your hands and feet. Avobahad, the loy Pasuk, lay... Maybe Rebbe's mighty trouble as Rebbe Shimon, and that's why we need the second price to say no. Even if you're working straight, Rebbe holds since the night comes, since the morning comes, you have to rewash your hands and feet. If we only have the second price that says if you go straight, Rebbe Lozav Rebbe Shimon says you don't have to wash your hands and feet. Maybe Rebbe Lozav Rebbe Shimon that you don't have to wash it because you're working straight. But in the first price where you worked at night and now you're taking a break and then you're going to continue in the day, maybe he would agree you have to wash. And might delay Rabbi Tzricha, that's why we need the first price to tell us of Allah's Rebbe Shimon holds, even in such a case, you do not have to wash your hands and feet because you never left the base on Mikdash. My time is Rebbe. What's the reason for Rebbe that says you have to rewash? The Ksiv it says when you come to do the Avoidah. When, when you, Gishta means when you, when you move closer to do the Avoida. So every time you do the Avoida, even the next day, you have to rewash again, even though you never went out of the base on Mikdash. My time of Rabbi Lazar Hashem that says you don't have to wash the Ksiv Bevayim when you come into the base of Mikdash. This fellow is already in the base of Mikdash. He never went out. He does not have to wash again. The Edoch, according to Rabbi Nami Haksiv Bevayim, it says Bevayim. Why does Rabbi say in the morning you have to rewash? He never left. So he says, yeah, Iksiv Begishtam, Loiksiv Bevayim. If we would have just said Begishtam, the reason why he needs that pasta, because if we would have just said Begishtam, and it wouldn't say bevayim. Have I mean I'll call gisha begisha every time he comes to do the avoda, even if it's not the next morning, even in the same day. Every time he goes to do another avoda, perhaps he has to rewash. That's why it says bevayim kasev rachmana bevayim. That no, only when you come in. But if it just said bevayim, I would think if just when you come in. So it says begishtam that every day is a new avoda. You have to read do wash your hands. The idach and according to Allah's man Hashem and Nami haksev begishtam. It says when you do the avoid, it just doesn't say when you come in. So he says, says, I would say if you come into the base of Mikdash and you don't plan on doing avoida, perhaps you also have to wash your hands and feet. It says bevoyim when you come in. That's why it says begishtam, only when you come in to do an avoida. Morris says, what do you mean? If you come in, if you come in without, reconnaissance means empty, you're not coming to do the avoida, you don't need this pasuk. We already know haksiv l'shores. It says when you're coming in to serve, you have to wash your hands and feet. Okay, so again, so why do you need begishtam l'fi rabbi lozer rabbi shimon? And the begishtam yiboyle l'chad rabbi achabar yakov is telling us a different halacha of rabbi achabar yakov. What does he say? Don't rabbi achabar yakov. I call moidim. All agree. The kiddush sheni. So this I call moidim is going on the machlekes and yuma of rabbanan and rab meir. There's a machlekes rabbanan and rab meir when they when the kohen gadol. Had a, every time he switched his clothing, he had, a, he, had a, he had to wash his hands and feet, go to the mikvah, and then re-wash his hands and feet when he put on the new clothing. So does Machoikis remain Rab Chachamim, when did he wash? In other words, he was wearing, let's say, his big day zah. Okay? He's wearing his, his clothing, and now he's going to switch to his white clothing. So he washed, and then he went to the mikvah. Did he wash before he took off his, his, his big day zah, and then he went to the mikvah? Or did he first take off his clothing, then wash his hands and his feet, and then go into the mikvah? So Rabbanan say he washes his hands first, and then he takes off his clothing. Rameh says he takes off his clothing, and he washes his hands. But on the second washing, after he goes into the mikvah, then he puts on his 
new clothing and he washes his hands, or does he wash his hands and then put on new clothing? There, everybody agrees that first he puts on his new clothing, and then he washes his hands and feet. So that's how cold might Everybody agrees, Bekita Shani, the second washing, because Shulavish, when he recloses himself, Makadish, after he puts on his clothing, then he washes his hands and feet. How do you know? My time, Adon Akra, Ayyubi Gishtam. When he, you have to be ready to do the avoida uh-huh. before you wash your hands and feet. And if he's not uh-huh. wearing his clothing, he's not ready to do the avoida. Uh-huh. So you have to first be, clothe yourself, and then you can wash your hands and feet. Mishayni Machosu al Gishi, you're only missing coming to do the avoida, Bovad. And you're not, you're not to excuse this person. He's missing. He first has to get dressed and then come to do the avoida. Let's just see one more line because it'll end the, the, the sugi here. The same pasuk it says lahakter isha when he comes in lahakter to to be makta to, to to burn the isha the burnt offerings. Normally, why do we need that in the pasuk of washing hands and feet? Mahu I might think hani midi avoided the makla kapara. I might think you only have to wash your hands and feet for an avoida that is required for the kapara. It's ma'ak of the kapara. If you don't do this avoida like the like the, the shrita kabbalah zrika all that, but to put the a murim to put the limbs on the mizbeach. That even if you don't do, the guy gets a, gets a kapara. So therefore, I would think you wouldn't have to wash your hands and feet for that. Although avoid the light ma'ak of kapara like kamash malah. The pasuk says lahakter ish. Even if you're just putting the burnt offerings on the mizbeach, which is not ma'ak of doesn't stop having the person from having a kapara. Still, you have to wash your hands and feet kamash malah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, no, not <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen.